Welcome back, uh, uh, briefly back to the second game in the semi-finals of Gopher SE2's early Sunday Cup. Uh, we've got another, the second in a PvP series between uh, two players who we will introduce in just a second. I am casting with Zwieg, my uh, Swedish friend. Say hello, Zwieg. Hello. And so, in the bottom right-hand corner, spawning as the Blue Protoss on Belshia Vestige is... The winner of the last match in bringing the series to a 1-0 so far is Izubu's San. And his opponent who really wants to take this game, otherwise he's out on the Ghost Race 2 Sunday. Play for Copenhagen Wolves, it's Space Marine. Yep, and uh, this is going to be another, I think, very, not a quick, well, I wouldn't call the last game super fast, but it was, it'll be another very aggressive, high-octane game, I believe. It's This map doesn't really lend itself to digging in and uh, building a whole bunch of stuff you usually... Even, even I think, even in other matchups, it's fairly aggressive. The PvP, especially, I think this will be pretty interesting. And both of these players have been displaying all night really aggressive playstyles. Yeah, I must agree with that completely. And I mean, if I saw a macro uh, macro game on this I w uh, this map, I would be so so surprised, so surprised. Uh, but yeah, I mean, you never know. You never know. We have a Korean pro playing for the one side. We have uh, our nice uh, neighbors, of course, from Denmark, Copenhagen Wolves, Space Marine, um, playing as well. So, I mean, from two different parts of the world, playing it out here on the Go Frisier 2. Uh, you never know what you can see. I mean, the Space Marine style is, uh, you know, quite particular. He's he's a really nice overall player, though, and can do, you know, we've seen him to uh, several di different styles, though, uh, over the times we casted him and Sam we haven't seen way too much of but it's every time he's played you know he's shown really high amount of skill and really showing that he's confident in what he's doing so yeah I mean really interesting to see what they're gonna you know choose for tech paths and uh, if they actually want to go into map again in this map I think the thing with this map is that it's every single Protoss uh, aggression can be used effectively on this map blink yeah. stalkers fantastic ridges for blink stalkers there's fantastic openers for uh, fantastic openings for uh, oracles. Uh, DTs can have a riot because the third base is far enough away and the second is even far away. War uh, prisons. This, this, yeah, there's nothing that doesn't work on this map, so it's it's almost in that point where you're like, well, I'm going to choose one of the things that can work on this map, and that's all of them, so I'm just going to be aggressive. Hell with it. <laughs> yeah, there's something. sometimes you actually see those players who just say, you know, no, like sometimes you see the DTs going out with the rope behind it to be safe, uh, so you don't get DT to shut yourself. But sometimes you see the players who say, I'm just going to go for it, uh, basically. And, you know, if, if it works, it works. If it doesn't work, well, then you're kind of done for. But, um, you know, Sun wants to be safe. He scouts already, making sure what is Space Marine doing. And we do see the Space Marine, uh, he's getting a second gateway. As we usually see, but Sun does he have a second gateway? No, he's only on one gateway. Uh, so this time actually cha it changed his build a bit. Proto out of sentry. That's an interesting choice. Although it, maybe it's could be two things: fear of DTs, or yeah, and maybe going in with the warp prism. If he does go warp prism, that is of course. But uh, I'm I'm feeling warp prism from Space Marine tonight because he's been so aggressive with the, the oh. warp prism so so far. Um, Stargate comes down, so that um, totally pu puts a stop to what I was saying. Anyway, uh, Void Rays, maybe? What do you think? Oh, I know it's probably too early for Void Rays. So yeah, maybe, Phoenix, uh, start I would with say. A, start with Phoenix or, yeah, uh, Oracle. Yeah, Oracle is also po possible, of course. Um, something, though, I mean, uh, uh, Sun did it corner out that uh, Sentry as well, of course, and he's getting a 12 council behind this, so I would say there is a chance. Well, no, he's getting three gateways now. Well, is he going to get blinked this time? That, yeah, it's... Ooh. There you go! There you go! Finally! And you didn't actually say blink! This is a one no, game you no, didn't no. say blink! <laughs> oh... God damn it. Marik, now my you've done it. <laughs> my life. I'm gonna quit. That's it, I quit. Um, <laughs> I'm not really happy to see that. And we do see an Oracle! Like, I was just about to say, I don't think it's gonna be Oracle play, because it just doesn't seem to fit with Space <laughs> Marine's playstyle, and he builds a bloody Oracle. <laughs> <laughs> this is not your game. This is not your game. Uh... <laughs> So right now we do see the forge going down as well for Space Marine. Uh, interesting choice getting the forge already, uh, and only two gates against three gates blink will already. See. Okay, there we go. The, no, that's the third gate. Okay, so three gates uh, blink already, and we should see a fourth gate quite soon. And it seems like he spotted the Oracle already with that Hallucinated Phoenix, so he should be quite safe against this. But the Oracle could also scout the Twilight Council, which means the Space Marine is ready. So it's really back and forth right now. I don't know if he necessarily did see the oracle though did he because it was just on yeah, the outside did. of the 
Okay. I'm quite sure at least. I'm like 90% sure. I mean... Yeah, he's, he's ready to go. So yeah, that's uh, not going to get much done, but it is going to cause fear, which is um, one of the tools of the, the unspoken rules of the Oracle is if it, if it doesn't do any damage, it just sits around behind a base somewhere and scares the hell out of you. Oh, he's going to get sniped because he went too far in. Yeah, Oops. that's all. That's oh, all. Oh, oh god. Oh god. Does he survive? Two health. And he gets, and he gets the revelation off, which is really nice. Wow. But I didn't see the Twine Council though. He did. He missed the Twine Council, and that's a huge thing. Oh, that's thing. unfortunate. Now, yeah. that's very unfortunate for him. Um, now does he switch his tech? Yeah, he's going to Robo. This is one of Space Marine's moves that I've noticed tonight. Is that if he, if not necessarily gets scouted early, just I think he likes to show something. And then tech switch, and which is really effective. I think it, it really uh, it, the first game he played uh, of the night that we casted. It was very effective. And we do see a small engagement in the middle of the map here between two stalkers and another stalker, and uh, Space Marine losing a stalker to those stalkers. San's got a lot of units on the map. Point that out. Yeah, he he got a ton of units, and Blink just finished as well. So a nine stalkers to two, and only one of those Phoenix out. Those Immortals won't come in ages, and the plus one isn't even finished for Space Marine. And here comes his son, and he's going for it with his like, micro. I would be surprised if Space Marine didn't take a ton of damage right now. Lifting up one of the stalkers though, losing the first one. Uh, did he only lose one, or did he lose two? I wasn't sure. Yeah, he's but on a recharge is going to buy him a, a really a lot of time, and this is very crucial because he's just had two gateways come online. He's got a large bank. He's got the Robo Dan. He's got plenty of Chrono. He's, he's got the he he, he he just that out perfectly, throwing down the front on recharge, pushing those units back, and, and plus oh, one's just about to actually, finish up for him. Yeah, look at those force fields, though. He's actually trapping all those units and actually targeting right now the probes, losing quite a lot of uh, health on the stalkers, losing one stalker already. Trying to focus down the Nexus, but now he's actually attacking right into the army with a photo charge, targeting him. Nice uh, micro from some, but is it enough with the cannon, with the photo charge, with the army outside? It looks like he actually is going to be thwarted off here, and uh, Sun actually has to go back. It looks like perhaps is he going to do the aggressive blink for the immortal? He's really actually nice going for us. And he snipes the snipes the immortal, gets the, and that's I think that's the last uh, the last hope from Space Marine there. He's not going to have enough for another photon overcharge. He's just going to keep warping in store because he does have two base economy, so he's not going to be running out anytime soon. And he's going to get the Void Ray, and that was the last hope, I think. Three Stalkers and a Mothership Core, although the Mothership Core is coming in with the explode on Overcharge. So maybe that'll make the difference. A big warp in in the middle of the Mineral Line here. He may, if he pulls probes, he can probably hold this off. Oh, at what cost? Yeah, at what cost indeed. But Space Marine doing some nice damage because Sun is actually not choosing. He's attacking everything right now. Plus one has finished for Space Marine. So right now, Sun actually losing so many units here and he's not killing Nexus yet at least. And the Immortal's out. And right now, Space Marine is actually holding with one Immortal and that hooked an Overcharge. But the Immortal is actually dying right now. The Stalkers are blinking back and forth to pick it up. But Sun is not actually getting any more Stalkers. Only one Stalker left out on the field. And Space Marine has held. He has held this aggression. That was fantastic. And Sun lost pretty much everything. He's got he, he's got two Stalkers on the map left. That's it. He's two Stalkers in the Mothership Core. And uh, that was about it. And yeah, through that whole engagement, losing that entire army, he killed only four probes. So oh, wow. he, that was devastating. Like uh, while Space Marine lost just as much, he is now probably a little bit ahead in terms of units somehow. But he does have the warp prism, and he can stabilize now. He's got two base. His gases were up already before Sans were, so his gas income was established and ready to go. So he was investing it heavily. So. Yeah, really well done by Space Marine, really pulling out all the stops there to hold on, but he did, and yeah, well done. Oh, but the flag from Sane is going to try to flank. No, he's actually just trying to run past, actually right into the natural of Space Marine, but I don't think this is the right correct choice. He doesn't have the army anymore. He's trying to map behind this, getting the charges, getting the robo, he's getting the forge, trying to just survive behind this. But of course, we do see the war prism on its way right into the base. He's not even trying to hide it. And why is he going to warp in? One salad. One salad. Okay. <laughs> there we go. A few more salads. <laughs> a bit anticlimactic. Uh, but still, uh, this can do some nice damage. So we have to warp in at home, which means that right now Space Spring can uncontested attack right into the natural. And we don't see that much at home for Sun. Uh, where is this monster coin? Oh, don't let it get sniped. Don't let it get sniped. Oh, dear. oh that's true. Um, the, the, the big thing about that attack was that it was buying him more time again because I think he felt like Sun may have had production facilities online enough to maybe overwhelm him so he just bought a few more minutes to get another immortal up in this force and he's gonna counterattack. so yeah I don't think he he should bite off too much just yet <laughs>
Yeah, and also something major that uh, actually Space Marine is moving back, it seems, but something major was that Magical had to use that photon overcharge. So if a Space Marine were to attack into the natural, he actually would only have one, he wouldn't have two, and that is a huge difference. It is a big difference, yeah. Um, and we do see San continually trying to sneak past into the mineral line with uh, probes and, uh, sorry, zealots and stalkers. I think he realizes now that he needed to do economic damage and he didn't. Um, as I said, the gases were up already for Space Marine. He was macroing the whole time while San had stopped probe production. Uh, San is moving out again with another uh, big attack, but this time I think Space Marine's if he doesn't scout it, he's going to be aware that it's coming because he does see that pylon and he is picking it off. There is a big warp in there. Uh, he's not going to get the pylon down, but it may be in his best interest not to. Maybe get San to throw away some more units. Oh, this could be a bad engagement, though. Yeah, San actually is behind when it comes to army value. Oh, actually, no, they're quite equal, to be honest, right now. Uh, but Space Marine, I mean, he has the high ground advantage. He has the photon charge advantage. You can't really attack into this, and San knows this, but he has to do something. They're quite equal when it comes to uh, when it comes to the economy. But now Space Marine chooses to go for the third, and this is San's ch uh, chance to either go e uh, economic his himself, actually split his opponent up. I'm thinking San is going to try to get some high ground advantage and uh, maybe blink up onto the ridge um, and pull. Yeah, here we go. He's pulled the forces away. The photon overcharge isn't ready. He, he is moving his warp prism out maybe to try and oh. buy himself some more time again. Oh, there we go. In the and main base, though, of Space Marine, San is actually getting so many um, so many cells from the warp prism here and actually attacking right in. That means that right now he's open. It's the natural and he's playing up the opponent's army, doing so much damage right now. Who's going to hold? That's the question. We don't see any photon overcharge ever from uh, Space Marine, so right now Science just attacking right into with, with those uh, Archons. <coughs> yeah, San uh, split up his, that was a beautiful play by San, splitting up his opponent's forces, gets the snipe on that Nexus almost instantaneously and <laughs> recalls home, really well played. He is aware of the third now, he's got some units over there attacking the third base of Space Marine. Uh, just, sorry, just one zealot um, attacking the third, but uh, the, he's aware of it now, so he's gonna throw down the expansion of his own, but he's also gonna know that because he sniped off that Nexus, he is now technically economically ahead and it's going to take time for this Marine's uh, economy to catch up to a three base economy. So does he wait it out or does he try to get in there and do the damage now? I think he has to do some kind of damage. Sorry for that, by the way, my throat just died. Um... But yeah, Sun right now, he's getting a third behind this, and Space Marine, he, he, can he actually just go back into macro? I don't think so, I think he has to go now, and he has three Archons, he has three Mortals, he's going to push with this, and wait, Sun is going out as well. Both are pushing, but Sun has the one extra Mortal. This is going to be very interesting. Um, San moving up with the Warp Prism into the main base, uh, another distraction technique, but Space Marine's already seen it. Warping in a couple of Zealots, it's not going to be a huge deal. But actually, Stan decides to warp in four more Zealots, so that's going to be really devastating. This could be the, the game-ending play. He does get the photon overcharge down, so that will clean those Zealots up. And the big engagement in the middle with the Immortals chewing through those units as they stream up the ramp. And this is a devastating engagement for Space Marine, losing almost everything without losing any, without it taking any of San's units with him. He got a couple of Zealots and Stalkers, but that's what they're there for. And with the warp in, in the main base doing economic damage, that was that was the point of the game where I think Space Marine lost. And this is a counterattack by San's going to be unstoppable. He lost all of those units for no, for basically nothing. Yeah, that is very true. I actually thought it was going to go much better for Space Marine. He did have a plus two against a plus one only. But now it's actually equal once again, and Sun has a huge army, and Space Marine, it looks like, has to tap out for the second time in a row, and I, I must say, this is second time in a row as well, Sun, pulling back from looking, uh, it, when it looks like San is going to lose, he's, uh, he actually pulls back every single time, it looks like. Yeah, and uh, this game, I think, uh, has swung on that one mistake, moving up that ramp, engaging up the ramp, obviously there was no high ground vision, so his units were being destroyed before they could fire, and it was just a massacre, losing losing nothing in the exchange. San now has a huge immortal advantage, and I'm surprised not to see the tap out just yet. Maybe Space Marine thinks this force is all he's got or something, but yeah, it's definitely not. No, I mean, three base versus uh, two base right now. All the production facilities almost killed. Uh, or at least, no, <laughs> that's not even true, but uh, the robot dead, and Space Marine like, wow, GG, wow, I agree GG, completely. Yeah. I, I, must, I must, yeah, applause to right now. This is Sun, amazing play. And, I mean, just such a high caliber player playing right now is just amazing. Pulling back from Enough that, I'm so surprised.